Ahmed bin Abdullah al-Nami was one of four hijackers of United Airlines Flight 93 as part of the September 11 attacks. Born in Saudi Arabia, al-Nami had served as a muezzin and was a college student. He left his family in 2000 to complete the Hajj, but later went to Afghanistan bound for an al-Qaeda training camp where he befriended other future hijackers and would soon be chosen to participate in the attacks. He arrived in the United States in May 2001, on a tourist visa, where he would settle in Florida up until the attacks. On September 11, 2001, al-Nami boarded United 93 and assisted in the hijacking of the plane so that it could be flown into either the U.S. Capitol or the White House. The plane instead crashed into a field in rural Somerset County, Pennsylvania during a passenger uprising, due to the passengers receiving information from their families of the three other hijacked planes that hit the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Al-Nami, much like Abdulaziz Al-Amari, Whale al-Sheri, Walid al-Sheri and Mahand al-Sheri, was born in the ASIR province in Saudi Arabia. Born to the Quraysh tribe of Saudi Arabia, al-Nami served as a muezzin at the Sikli Mosque after having reportedly become very religious sometime in early 1999. That autumn he left his family home in Abba in the summer of 2000 to complete the Hajj, but never returned, instead traveling to the Al-Farouk training camp in Afghanistan where he met and befriended Walid and Whale al-Sheri. Two brothers from Kamis Mushade in the same province, and Said al Gambi. The four reportedly pledged themselves to jihad in the spring of 2000, in a ceremony presided over by Whale al Sheri, who had dubbed himself Abu Masib al Janubi after one of Muhammad's companions. Dubbed Abu Hashim, al Nami was considered gentle in manner by his colleagues, and reported that he had a dream in which he rode a mare along with Muhammad, and that the Prophet told him to dismount and fight his enemies to liberate his land. During his time at al Farouk, there is a curious mention under Mushabib al Hamlan's details that al Nami had recently had laser eye surgery, an unsighted fact that does not reappear. By October, he had taken a prospective hijacker Mushabib al Hamlan from Afghanistan to Saudi Arabia, where they both procured B1 B2 tourist slash business visas on October 28, but al Hamlan then decided not to proceed and is thought to have returned to his family. Al Nami's visa application has since been reviewed. And while he mentioned that Al Hamlan will be traveling with him, he listed his occupation as student but failed to provide an address for his school, and listed his intended address in the United States merely as Los Angeles, in the end he never used this visa to enter the United States, and reported his passport as lost, and procured a new one from Jeddah. He used the new passport to acquire a new B1-B2 visa in Jeddah on April 23rd, again recopying his answers from previously although crossing out the lines regarding Al Hamlan and previous attempts to acquire a visa. He was interviewed by a consular officer, who again approved his application. Records at the time only recorded past failures to procure a visa, so the officer had no way of realizing that Nami had successfully received an earlier visa. In mid-November 2000, the 9-11 Commission believes that Al Nami, Whale and Walid Al Sheri, all of whom had obtained their U.S. visas in late October, traveled in a group from Saudi Arabia to Beirut and then onward to Iran where they could travel through to Afghanistan without getting their passports stamped. This probably followed their return to Saudi Arabia to get clean passports. An associate of a senior Hezbollah operative is thought to have been on the same flight, although this may have been a coincidence. While in the United Arab Emirates, Al-Nami purchased travelers' checks presumed to have been paid for by Mustafa al-Hazawi. Five other hijackers also passed through the UAE and purchased travelers' checks, including Majid Mokht, Saeed al Gamdi, Hamza al Gamdi, Ahmed al Haznawi, and Whale al Sheri. In March 2001, Ahmed al Nami appeared in an al Qaeda farewell video showing 13 of the Muslim hijackers before they left their training center in Kandahar. While he does not speak, he is seen studying maps and flight manuals. On April 23, al Nami was recorded obtaining a new U.S. visa. On May 28, Al Nami arrived in the United States from Dubai with fellow hijackers Mahand Al Sheri and Hamza Al Gandhi. By early June, Al Nami was living in apartment 1504 at the Del Rey Racket Club condominiums with Saeed Al Gandhi in Del Rey Beach, Florida. He telephoned his family and ASIR shortly after arriving in the country. In June, he phoned his family for the last time. He was one of nine hijackers to open a Sun Trust bank account with a cash deposit around June 2001, and on June 29 received either a Florida state identification card or driver's license. He may have been one of three hijackers that listed the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, 
Florida as their permanent address on driver's licenses, though other sources claim he listed the Del Rey condominium. On August 28, Al-Nami and Ahmed al Haznawi reportedly bothered a Del Rey Beach resident, Maria Siskar Simpson, to let them through her apartment to retrieve a towel that had fallen off their balcony onto hers. On September 5, Al-Nami and Saeed al Gambi purchased tickets for a September 7 flight to Newark at Mile High Travel on Commercial Boulevard, paying cash for their tickets. Jihad Jera and Ahmed al Haznawi also purchased tickets for the same flight from Passage Tours. On September 7, all four Flight 93 hijackers flew from Fort Lauderdale to Newark International Airport aboard Spirit Airlines. On September 11, 2001, Nami arrived in Newark to board United Airlines Flight 93 along with Saeed al Gambi, Ahmed al Haznawi, and Jihad Jera. Some reports suggest Hayes now was pulled aside for screening while others claim there is no record of whether any of the four were screened. The lack of CCTV cameras at the time has compounded the problem. Nami boarded the plane between 7.39 a.m. and 7.48 a.m., seated in first class 3C, next to Saeed al Gambi. Due to the flight's routine delay, the pilot and crew were notified of the previous hijackings and were told to be on the alert, though within two minutes Jera had stormed the cockpit leaving the pilots dead or injured. At least two of the cell phone calls made by passengers indicate that all the hijackers they saw were wearing red bandanas, which some have questioned may have signified an allegiance to the Egyptian Islamic Jihad. The calls also indicated that one of the men had tied a box around his torso, and claimed there was a bomb inside, it is not known which hijacker this was. Passengers on the plane heard through phone calls the fates of the other hijacked planes, and organized a brief assault to retake the cockpit. Three times in a period of five seconds there were shouts of pain or distress from a hijacker outside the cockpit, suggesting that NAMI was being attacked by the passengers. The hijackers crashed the plane into the Pennsylvanian countryside rather than seat control of the plane. All aboard died. He has been portrayed by British actor Jamie Harding in the 2006 film United 93 and Asim Wali in the film Flight 93. Thanks for watching.